I don't know what's wrong with me, but I did not hear about this, that apparently the IO domain is disappearing. The Indian Ocean does not exist anymore. I was unaware of that. Today, we have something a little bit different from Gareth Edwards, who typically chronicles the history, uh, the forgotten history of the Silicon Valley and his column, The Crazy Ones. When the British government announced last week that it was tra transferring sovereignty of the island in the Indian Ocean to the country of Marat uh, Maratius, Gareth immediately realized its online implications, the end of the IO domain suffix. Can they just do that? What, what about all the companies? Yeah, they do. Like, oh, wait, they lose it? Because I use frame.io. Yeah, what about fly.io? Wait, they're just all leaving? It can't actually be real. In this piece, he explores how geopolitical changes can unexpectedly disrupt the digital world. I don't care. Just say no. Just keep the domain, and we'll call it input-output and call it a day. Right? Like, Google, come on. People, come on. Like, this isn't that hard. We can just say, hey, here's a new one. Mauritius, Mauritius can have their sweet one, and then we can have our other one. Like, what the hell is this? Uh, in this piece, he explores the geopolitical changes of unexpected disrupt in the digital world. He exp uh, his exploration of historical precedents, such as the fall of the Soviet Union and the breakup of Yugoslavia. Damn, we're we're, we're going all. I mean, we're going everywhere. He, uh, dude, Iron Curtain going down. Uh, offers valuable context for tech founders, users, and observers. Read this for a look at the unexpected intersection of international relations and internet infrastructure. Kate Lee. All right. October 3rd, the British government announced that it was giving up sovereignty over a small tropical atoll in the Indian Ocean known as the Chagos, Chagos Islands. The islands would be handed over to its neighboring island country of Mauritius. Right? Am I saying that correct? Mauritius? Uh, about 1,100 miles off the southeastern coast of Africa. The story did not make the tech press, but perhaps it should have. The decision to transfer the islands to their new owner will result in the loss of one of the tech and gaming industry's preferred top-level domains, .io. This is crazy. This is a BS article? Is it a BS article? Uh, whether it's github.io, gaming site, itch.io, or even Google IO, which arguably kicked off the trend in 2008, IO has been a constant presence in the tech lexicon. Its popularity is sometimes explained by how it represents the abbreviation for input output, or the data received and processed by any system. What's not often acknowledged is that it's more uh, than a quippy domain. It's a country code top level domain, CCTLD related to a nation, meaning it involves pol uh, politics far beyond the digital world. I would just assume that Mauritius, Mar Mauritius would just keep this. I assume that there must be some sort of trickle of income that they get as a part of it, because I know that like registering a .io product costs significantly more than something else. I'd be just confused if they couldn't just keep it. They already have their own country code CC. Well, they get two. Hey, they get two. What's the problem here? Uh, since 1968, the UK and the US has operated a major military base in the Chagos Islands, officially known as the British Indian Ocean Territory. But the neighboring nation of Mauritius, Mauritius, are you sure that Mauritius, Mauritius, oh man, dude, Mauritius, 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 is it really Mauritius? All right, here, let me just hear it once. Mauritius. 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 Okay. Mauritius has always disputed uh, British sovereignty over them. The, Mauritius, the Mauritian government has long argued that the British illegally retained control when Mauritius gained uh, independence. It has taken over 50 years, but that dispute has finally been resolved. In return for a 99-year lease for the military base, the islands will become a part of Mauritius. UK is letting go of a lot of territories. First Hong Kong, now, now uh, .io. Uh, once this treaty is signed, the British Indian Ocean Territory will cease to exist. Various international bodies will update their records. In participation, the International Standards for Organization, ISO, will remove the country code IO from its specification. The Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, IANA, which creates and delegates top-level domains, uses this specification to determine which top-level country domains should exist. Once IO is removed, the IANA will refuse to allow any new registrations with that IO domain. Oh, any new registrations. Okay. Well, that's, that's not nearly as crazy. It will also automatically begin the process of retiring existing ones. There is no official, official count of the number of, uh, of extent IO domains. Oh, yeah, I guess if they're trying to do this. I wonder how fast this process will begin. Officially, .io and countless websites will disappear. At a time when domains can go for millions of dollars, it's a shocking reminder that there are forces outside the Internet that still affect our digital lives. I mean, it's, it shouldn't be that shocking. 
I mean, GDPR is something that regulates uh, Europe, but Americans often benefit or get hurt by GDPR itself, depending on how you think about it. Um, but nonetheless, like just because a country can make a law that actually affects the entirety of the Internet. Uh, I very much doubt IANA will force .io offline. Yeah, my guess is it will have a, run lo a, a, a long run out. But what do you do when you want to re uh, renew it? When we renew .io, because at some point you have to renew these domains. Are they just going to not allow renewals? Is there going to be one, two renewals before you're not allowed? When domains outlive countries, the removal of an entire country or territory from the world map is incredibly rare. So one might ask, is it rare? I mean, historically speaking, countries get added and removed a decent amount of times. It's happened more than once in the last 100 years. Uh, Yugo was around 1990, yeah. Slovakia and... What did, what did it's Yugo? And so I, I can't remember. And then also the Czech Republic. Czech, Czechoslovakia. This is not that old. Uh, when domains outlive countries. Okay. Answer is simple. History. There are two organizations responsible for domains and internet addresses. The IANA decides what should and shouldn't be a top-level domain, such as .com, .org, .uk, .or, .nz. The organization originated in the University of so Southern California, although it was formalized in 1994 when it won a contract put out by the U.S., it operated for several years as a small research and management committee. As the internet grew, it became clear that a more formal setup was required. By 1998, the IANA became part of a new organization, the Internet Corporate and Assigned Names and Numbers, ICANN. ICANN, based in the U.S., was given the broader responsibility of overseeing the operational stability of the internet and ensuring international interests were represented. Okay, <laughs> more like I can't. Um, uh, these two organizations seemed like they have mundane roles, but they have found themselves making some of the hardest decisions on the global internet. On, separ on September 19, 1990, the IANA created and delegated the top-level domain .su to the USSR. Less than a year later, the USSR collapsed. <laughs> all right, all right, USSR, we'll officially recognize you. Here you go. Oh, darn, you're already dead. Wow, that didn't... That Cheers to you, USSR. So the Sioux domain was handed to Russia to operate alongside with its own RU. The Russian government agreed that it would eventually be shut down, but no clear rules around its governance or when that should happen were defined. But ambiguity is the worst thing for a top-level domain. Unknow unknowingly, this decision created an environment in which Datsu became a digital Wild West. Today, it is barely policed top-level domain. Do we want policed top-level domain? I mean, it's an interesting question in of itself. Is it nice that there's a domain that exists out there that people can say that some organization that we you have zero interaction with can be like, you shall no longer exist, Indian Ocean. A plausibly deniable, a deniable home of Russian dark ops and a place where supremacist content and cybercrime uh, have found cover. Yeah, I mean, that, I mean, it, sound, it sounds terrible. Sounds like sounds bad. Uh, a few years later, in 1992, the IANA learned a simply a, sim a similarly harsh lesson at the end of the Balkan Wars, which saw the breakup of Yugoslavia into several smaller states. In its aftermath, the joint nation of Serbia and uh, Montenegro attempted to adopt the name Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. Uh, Slovenia and Croatia objected, claiming that it implied Serbia and Montenegro were Yugoslavia's legitimate successors. The two countries protested the UN. You're right. Country breakups are super rare and don't happen. Also the 90s. <laughs> Dog, that's like 25 years ago. We're in the 90s, man. Anyways, it's pretty funny. As the international issues over Serbia and Montenegro's name rumbled on throughout the early 90s, the IANA remained unsure about who should control .u. Uh, .yu, Yugoslavia's top-level domain. Email access and the internet were now integral to research and international discussions, and the IANA's ambiguity led to an extraordinary act of academic espionage. This is wild. You know, I never really thought about top-level domains. I always knew that the IANA like, had some level of control over it, but damn, I didn't really think about this idea of having country codes, and then what happens when the country goes bye-bye. Uh, according to the journalist uh, Kelan uh, Kolev, Slovenia academics traveled to Serbia at the end of 1992. Their destination was the University of Belgrade in the country's capital. By the way, I lived really close to Belgrade, Belgrade, Montana, for quite some time. I was in between Bozeman and Belgrade for quite some time. Uh, on the arrival, or on arrival, they broke into the university and stole all the hosting software and domain records for the .u top-level domain. Oh, my gosh. They just stole them? What the hell does that even mean? What did, 
what the hell does this even mean? They just broke it and stole the records? Were they like, print, did they just print them out? Like, how do you steal them? Everything they needed to seize control. Like, did it actually just flip a, a fit on some floppy disks? Bro, damn. How are we going to get these records out? Don't worry. I brought four and a half megabytes. Plenty of space to get all these domains. Boop. <laughs> Illegal DNS zone transfer. Uh, everything they needed to seize control. For the next two years, the .u domain was unofficially operated by Arnes, Academic and Research Network of Slovenia, which repeatedly denied its involvement in the original heist. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is so funny. They're like, hey, uh, Arnes, you somehow have all the data. I don't know what you're talking about. No, like we, we're looking at it. You're operating it. I don't know what you're talking about. Did you steal it all? I don't have floppy disks, if that's what you're asking. Bro, I don't have any floppy. I would love to have one of the original floppy disks from the heist. You know it was floppy disks. You know somebody ran out of there with like a... Maybe they even had like the big ones. Because what level... Oh, this was 1992? They, I guess they probably didn't have the big ones. They probably had the... Uh, they didn't have the floppy, the five and a quarters. They probably had three and a halves. Oh my gosh, those floppies. Oh. Nah, nah, it wasn't me. Nah, right. Arnes rejected all requests by the Serbian institutions for new domains, as severely limiting the country's ability to participate in the growing internet community. The situation became so messy that, in 1994, IANA founding manager John Postel personally stepped in and overrode IANA's regulations, forcibly transferring ownership of the .eu domain back to the University of Belgrade. Uh, 3.5 floppies are still uh, military-grade tech? Yeah, absolutely. They're really fantastic. Don't copy that floppy. Hey, would you copy a floppy? Would you download a car if you could? Hell yes, I would, brother. Uh, in 2006, Montenegro declared independence from Serbia with the digital revolution now firmly underway. Dude, what happened to countries? This doesn't happen very often. You're telling us a story where it happened like six times. <laughs> Trust me, bros. It never happens. Also, nine, 18 years ago it happened. And also several times in the 90s. You wouldn't download a DNS, would you? Uh, the IANA was determined not to let chaos reign again, or once again. It created two new top-level domains, .rs for Serbia and .me for Montenegro. Both were issued on the requirement that .u would officially be determinated. It would take until 2010 for this to happen. Okay, look at that, though. Look at that. That's, that's big. So in four years, .u was taken down. But the IANA eventually got its way. Burned by experience, the organization laid down the new stricter set of rules and timescales for top-level domain expiration that exist today. In these rules that will soon be applied to .io domains, they are firm and they are clear. Once the country code no longer exists, the domain must cease to exist, too, ideally within three to five years. Holy cow. Fly.io.com just got real expensive. Uh, like a tenant being told that their landlord is selling up and they must move. Every individual and company who uses .io domain will be told the same. There has to be an exception, right? Oh, Ayana straight up said they might not remove .io. They might not? <laughs> is that is that good for you? Uh, we might not do it. By the way, right now is a great time to take, like, itch.io.com. Itch.io.com. Everything io.com is a good time to do it right now. The endurance of physical uh, history. IO has become popular with startups, particularly those involved in crypto. <laughs> I think it's actually just popular involved in everything, not just crypto, right? Crypto is not some exclusive hold on .io. I would say that effectively every single startup that I know does this. In fact, I almost built a logging and error detection platform in 2012, Helm.io. I think I owned it for a while. I'm not sure. Uh, these are businesses that often identify with one of the original principles of the internet. The cyberspace grants uh, a form of independence to those who are uh, who use it. Yet, it is the long tale of real-world history that might force them a major change. The IANA may fudge its own rules to allow .io to continue to exist. Money talks, and there is a lot tied up in IO domains. Yeah, I would just assume this has to happen. It would be... Cr I just cannot imagine a world where .io actually gets destroyed. However, the history of the USSR, because .com's not tied to any country, right? .com does not mean USA. .net, online.net. So I would just be shocked if they're just like, I mean, I know it's it, it, it kind of is. It kind of is, but that's an implicit relationship, right? It's three letters, and, it's, and it, it just means commercial. Rules are different for three letters. 
I love like that's that's the re that's the reasoning. I would love to be in a meeting where there's like a group of like all the execs from like Fly IO, Google IO, GitHub IO, and they're all in there and they're just like, hey, we need our country to exist. And then the Ayana people being like, well, I mean, <sighs> there's only two letters. I I can't do it. I, it's two let. It's t it's two letters. We can't. Uh, sorry, it's policy, man. I, I don't know if you if you look right here at the chart. The chart says three letters, general admission, so anyone can get in. But two, do you see that? Two. That's two letters. That's con That's countries. That's not. You see that? The chart says so. I don't know, man. What am I supposed to do? That's it. Elon Musk is going to buy an island and save .io. <laughs> Elon Island. Elon Ocean. Let's go. Um, anyways, I think it's really simple to think of things as much more static than we realize. That all these things just exist. They're not big deals. People don't really take them seriously. But it actually is more serious than you realize, by the way. Because, like, look, I own the Primogen.tv. Okay, well, it's not up right now, but I do own the Primogen.tv. Uh, my guess is that, I, I honestly, just to, like, throw this out there, I really somehow think that Ayana is going to make a concession, and I think that this is going to just cause a whole... This is my prediction. Ayana is going to have a concession to IO, and then this is going to cause an entire huge issue where they're just like, everybody else is like, what the hell is this? You took away my country code, but then you don't take away this country code because there's money behind it. And it's just going to like, shit is going to go wild. People are going to be super upset. And it's going to like, honestly, I think it's probably better that they should make IO domains uh, go away. Re like literally, yeah, dude, concession to IO equals reigniting the Balkan Wars. <laughs> it is quite ridiculous. So... We'll see. There's about 1.6 million domains in .io. Whoa. I know it feels like it's a nothing burger, but this could cause a whole, a whole, like, it doesn't, I'm not even sure which direction it's going to go. And I feel like both directions are bad, right? Because if you take away .io, you have all these companies that are affected, and then that's going to cause a whole set of problems. Or the inverse which is that they do let it, and then all these other countries are like, WTF, you can't, like, we agreed you can't do that. This is the rules. You can't create a standard, enforce a standard, and then decide not to because there's money or else people get pissed. I know that, like, does happen. It's called the law, but the law is three letters. See, it's three letters. It's not two letters. And so since the law is three letters, you can usually skirt around it by having more money. Okay? It's different. You wouldn't understand. Um, but this one's two letters, so... A gen.